Hello everyone, it's Adam. <laughs> Adam down in Costa Rica uh, with the Costa Rica Experience Podcast. And this is going to be interesting because we've had some technical challenges tonight. Full-on technical challenges. Uh, but we're going to see if we can, see if we can get uh, Carolina in on this and uh, see if she can join me with the, in, the, in the podcast tonight. Technical challenges. You got to get used to them here in Costa Rica, man. Because it is on, it's on right here. So we're going to see if she comes in and if I can invite her in and we can actually talk tonight. Because who knows if this is going to work. We've, we've just been spending the last, I don't know, 20 minutes trying to get our computers working, trying to get our phones working. Lord have mercy. It's been rough, man. It's rough. I'm sweating. Whew. Technical, technical challenges. Let me see if she's coming in. Can, can she come in? Is she going to get in? Allow your viewers to request to join. Yes, I'm allowing them, my viewers. Can she come in? Is she here? Can anybody come in? Come on in, guys. We might have to do this on my personal page because, I, I, you know, that's the way this rolls, you know. Boy. <laughs> I love it, man. This is what we call Pura Vida. Pura vida. The best laid plans. In French, they would say, c'est la vie. Such is life. Should you do anything? Carolina, yes. <laughs> Can you see me? Are you in? Is anybody here? Oh, man, this is awesome, dude. You know what? Life is full of challenges, man. And you either, you either work with them or... Uh, you don't, dude, and you give up. And hey, what on earth? I see you. All right, let's see. Oh my God, is this actually gonna work? Is this actually gonna work? This is insane. <laughs> I see it's connecting. Oh my God! <laughs> es un milagro! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, we did it. We faced. We, we, we did, did it, man. We did it. It's, it's possible. It, it, everything <laughs> is possible. Everything and is possible. All it takes is grinding, grinding hard work. That's all it does. <laughs> that was awesome. I, I was explaining, you know, like, I'm trying to get in. You're trying to get in. It's like, wow, could Facebook make this any more difficult? I thought this was supposed to be, like, one click easy. And it's not yeah, one click too. easy. No, not at actually, all. I, I thought that it was going to be just one second, but it's okay. I, I learned how to do a podcast live, so I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> well, this is actually the second most challenging um, podcast live I've ever done. I had one where we moved from like computers to smartphones back and forth. It took like 45 minutes. So we're, actually, this is, this is now only number two. On the list. Oh, this really? is the, okay, the second most great. difficult. So, am I on the first place or on the second? <laughs> You're in second, <laughs> as far as the most difficult. So that's good. Okay. You good. know. <laughs> okay. Good. Well, I'm thank glad. you so much. Thank you so much for for joining me. I, I really really appreciate. It. Where are you right now in Costa Rica? Um, I am in Escazú at the moment. We could be neighbors. You might be right next door. Do you hear Do you hear my dogs barking? Because I think. <laughs> Just cross, 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 cross the, we'll cross the cross street. The door and then come in. Let's do it together. <laughs> it, would, it would be easier. That would have been easier. That would, that's yeah. probably a good plan. So, but you live? Yeah. Do you live? You live full time at the beach in Santa Teresa? Is that is that right? No. Well, I am at the beach sometimes. Uh, it's uh, usually in summertime. In in the months where it's it's not raining so much because. It gets a little bit dead, dead yeah. feel. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yes. So tell, tell me about where you grew up. And did, you grew up in Costa Rica, I, I assume, right? Yeah, yeah, I grew up in Costa Rica. Um, tell me a little bit about growing up here. What was it like? It's a very different country. Uh, not that long ago. You're not as old as I am. But, but a little while ago, it was a very different country. Tell me what it was like actually growing up in Costa Rica back then. Yeah, well, Costa Rica was... It's, it's basically, it's always been touristy and stuff, but it mm -hmm. was less, of course. It was less touristy. I remember the beaches were a lot more empty sure. at that time. But my mom and my dad 
they really, really loved nature. So they took us on a lot of trips all the time. We were going to the beach all the time camping. Yep. So we were, you know, four wheel drive kids. Did you grow up and in San Jose? I grew up in San Jose, but yeah. uh, it was, we, we used to go a lot out. Like we, we were always out. Yeah. And my dad was a great sportsman. He, he was a gymnast. He died already. Oh. He passed away. Um, but he was a gymnast. He did marathons. Oh, wow. and, and he loved swimming a lot and, you know, free diving and stuff. And, you know, he was all very active all the time. So it, he, he pushed us a lot to do sports. So I was a kid that didn't see any television at all. At yeah. All. Well, there's I, probably I, only like one channel back then in Costa Rica, right? I mean, no, but we had cable. We had <laughs> oh, you cable did? TV. What? Oh, yeah. my God. What are you, like 22? Yeah, I Come mean, on. I remember seeing both <laughs> of the show when I was getting ready to go to school. Mm -hmm. My mom would wake me up with both of the show. Do you remember? Yep. No. Okay. no. No? No. Really? Okay. No. So, that was, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. It was something from Canada or I don't know. Right, right. But anyway... Um, yeah, well, I, so I grew up very active all the time doing sports uh, from uh, I was a gymnast for six years. And then I started doing um, some other sports, running all the time, running and swimming. And, you know, so I've been always active outside in nature and and, and I, I was not playing with dolls, you know, and stuff like <laughs> that. No, no, no. I was, you know, a very active person all the time. Right. I think that that really helped uh, and changed my whole perspective of life and 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 things because it it helped me just like to first of all to play with kids a lot to with men so I was not only with girls at school always always with men and girls you know like and yep. um, and I think it gave me a lot of strength and uh, not only physically but mental mental yeah. strength. Yeah. yeah, when you're getting pushed around by a bunch of guys, you got to be tough, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was tough. I was not letting anybody let me down. <laughs> so basically, you, you credit your dad with give, getting you into sports and activities and stuff. When did you take up surfing? Um, well, when I was in New York, I started coming to Santa Teresa all the time. And I started, I said, like, how come I'm not going to surf at least, you yeah. know? learn how to surf and it's been hard because Santa Teresa it's a very it's usually big waves yep and you have to be strong to get in yeah it's not the it's not the ideal place to like learn to surf right no no yeah. no, no so so I'm trying to to start going to different places to try different ways and and you know like keep on going in, yeah 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 surfing so yeah. tell us about how you ended up in New York how did that how did that happen what were you doing at the time and how long were you in New York for well, you know, it's something, it's, it's, it's funny because you call, you call things to come into your life, literally. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was uh, one time when my dad passed away and I divorced because I was married, I was, I needed a change and I went to New York for, you know, just for pleasure. And, and when I was there, um, I decided that I wanted to stay in New York and not come back and I missed my flight. <laughs> and that it happened like that. And when I was there, I knew that Costa Rica won a seat in the Security Council in the UN. Yep. And and I I made I made some arrangements to see if I could um, apply for that play for that post. Really? And then the person that 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 wanted to help me and that knew that I really really could do it that I was a good candidate. He, she told me, you need to come here and, you know, do some interviews and stuff. So I came back to Costa Rica. I did the interviews, everything, that, the protocol that I had to take in order to take that post. And then they, they chose me to, to, to wow. be part of the Security Council and the UN. And uh, President Oscar Arias was a great support for me. So you worked, as a lawyer. Right, you worked for him before that, right? You worked for his foundation before? Yes, I worked for his foundation before. So that you know, open the doors because I, I worked for him mostly sure. for free. Uh, sure. As soon as I left, uh -huh, as soon as I left college, I started doing my, my practice there and I stayed yep. for longer periods than I, that I was supposed to. 
So I think that a lot opened the doors a lot for me. Yeah, I think, I think what you just mentioned, three, three is a great, great number. When you are starting out um, and don't know anything, I think free, working for free is, uh, is the way to go. Like I absolutely, you know, like me starting this podcast, people are like, when are you going to start making money? I'm like, never, dude. I'm doing this to get into it, to learn, learn how to use whatever, learn the tools, learn everything about it. For free, yes. of and, course and it's and free. And, and of course you need to get at the public and you need to get their confidence, you need to get their uh, friendship. Yes. And then when it grows bigger and then maybe maybe you can find sponsors for them. Yep. But I, I agree with you. In the beginning, you have to, you have to give it for free. I mean, it's, exactly. you have to build. How are you supposed to get the experience, right? And I, I'm, when we had our, we used to have a spa in Manuel Antonio and I'd have, you know, just kids, 20, 20 years old, you know, you know, took a year off from college or something and would come work for us and, you know, hey, man, you know, you're not paying me enough. Or, hey, man, you know, you're not doing. And I'm like, dude, you have no skills. Like, you have nothing, right? You got to get some skills, you know? You, you got to <laughs> yeah, get I mean, skills. Yeah, I, I like, I had, I, I'll give you an example. Like, I had one kid who was like, man, I'm not making enough, right? Whatever he was making, a thousand, he was like a receptionist making 800 or a thousand dollars a month man, I'm not making enough. And I'm like, look, man, I, I can't pay you more because the, the business can't afford more. But I tell you what, we had a rental home at the time. I was like, look, I haven't done anything with the rental home. We had just moved to San Jose. So the rental home was like available, right? We were living in that home and then we moved to San Jose. So it was available. And I was going to start promoting it, trying to rent it. And I said, look, man, I'd prefer not to spend the time doing that because I got other stuff to do. I'll let you do it. You do it all. And anything you get, I'll give you 25% of everything you book. Everything. Perfect. That's the best thing you could Great do. Great opportunity. I will look at that like that's a wonderful opportunity. Here's an opportunity. If he rents it for whatever, $1,000 a month, it's an extra $250 a month in his pocket, whatever it may be. Goose egg. And I was like, man, what are you doing? He just, they want it. Yeah. You want it for free. I'm like, no, you've got to give it for free. You've got to go out there and experience and get experience um, yeah. to actually grow. How are you supposed to grow? <laughs> no, and, and you know, when you leave college, you have no practice. You have, you That's know, right. nothing, basically. Nothing. You know, nothing. Yeah. Until yep. you start working, then you learn it, then you find your passion, your real passions. Yep. So where did you, was it in New York where you, where you found your passion or was it before then? When was it that you actually started figuring out what you liked and what you no, wanted I, to go I, for? I already liked going, working for human rights because I had a, a master's in human rights before going to New York. And I already knew that I wanted to work for the people. You know, I had the mission, I already knew it, that I had to work for the people. And, and, and in the Security Council in the UN, I had the opportunity to hear about the situation of our oceans and, the, and, and about climate change. I had to go to a lot of meetings and that had, they were related to it. And you know, I, I, I was like always asking for, for to work for the oceans. I, I already had it. I already had it. Right, you already had the passion. I don't want right. to leave this meeting. Every time I went to meetings where they were discussing the situation of the oceans, yep. I wanted to stay. I, I really did. Yep. And, you know, uh, after being in the UN, I, I started working as a consul of Costa Rica in New York. And that was a more... That's interesting. That was an what interesting. Does a console, what does a consul do for, I mean, I'm not even, what, is it, what, what does a consul actually do for, you're working for the Costa Rican government, right? What do you actually do? Yeah. Well, the consul, basically what they do is that they, uh, we, we are representing the Costa Ricans there and we are helping them with anything that they need. So as they cannot go to the, you know, to the government offices, they go to our offices to mm-hmm. see, you know, if they, we can help them with any any matter. We are like their saviors. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. So, for anything that they need, we need anything, to save right? them every day for a lot of with a lot of issues. They come with like you don't know how how many things we have to. What's the craziest with? craziest story from working up there? I mean, I've seen them here, right at the embassy when I've been whatever renewing my passport. And I've literally seen guys come into the embassy from the U.S. with nothing, like no shirt on, like shorts, no shoes, 
nothing. And guys have been like, man, I was mugged. They took everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is it like that? Is it that kind of thing? Or what, what, what's the craziest story you, you ran no, into? I mean, there? sometimes we have to do a lot of human things, like very okay. human, you know, deal with people that, that were left on the street mm. and that nowhere to go, not, nowhere, nothing to do, no money. So we need to find shelter for them. Sometimes people that were really, they didn't have any, any ticket to go back to their, you know, to their families. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I mean, I had crazy, crazy stories. Let me see which one, crazy <laughs> one because there are so many, but, but I mean, sometimes we, we need to assist a lot of prisoners. Oh, really? So that, yeah. I mean, prison, uh, let me see people that were like uh, laundry. Laundering, money laundering. Laundering money, uh-huh. Yeah, uh, laundering money, yeah. So sometimes, you know, I went to, 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 to one meeting with one of them in my consul general because I was the second in charge. She was the consul and then me. And when I got into the meeting, the person that was detained, he was like, oh, I know your brother. I know your brother. <laughs> <laughs> I was hey, like, that's Puerto Vida, man. That is Costa Rica. Everybody knows everybody, right? I mean, that's just it. <laughs> that's so you know, funny but uh but it was a great experience although uh, at the end i wanted to do something different sure. i really needed a change and i needed to swift shift from the governmental institutions yeah to something easier well i'm sure faster. yeah you see it where where you feel like wow i can really make a difference and it's very difficult i've run into enough government to know it's very difficult to make a change in those sort of situations, uh, right? It's just to make an impact is just really, really tough because they're just layers of bureaucracy on top of you, right? Exactly. So it's very tough, yeah. So yeah. you're in New York and you were like, I love oceans, right? Grew up on the, I grew up going to the ocean, going swimming, free diving with my dad. And were you just like percol percolating an idea of what you wanted to do or what happened that made you kind of, move forward or just was it the end of the job and you were like what am I going to do now or, or what was the kind of yeah impetus? yeah it was exactly that that it was the end of the job I had to come back well I was a dip I was a career diplomat so I had a job forever basically I, I, sure. I had to re you know I had to rotate so I was called to go back to Costa Rica and come back to you know yep. and it was difficult because by the time that I was there uh thinking about coming back to Costa Rica, I literally felt like I, I had to, to leave that career. I, I felt like I, was, I, did, I didn't belong to that. Sure. And I saw a lot of people to, to ask them about what they think. And people were telling me, you know, you, if you need to fly, you, you have to fly. Don't get yep. attached to, to the diplomacy just because it has a good name in the world, yep. you know. Yep. People, people really look at you differently when they when you tell them that you're sure. a people, you know. Sure. And I had to like really detach, you know, from that and let it go and do what I really, really wanted to do. Yep. And, no, and I know it, it's very, very. That is a very, very tough choice to make. Um, I actually yeah. work with people in government and in government, you know, type jobs, and it is hard. Not because it's it's a, almost it's a lifetime career, right? And yes. And I don't know about Costa Rica here. Money's probably not as good. But for the U.S., the money can be great. Oh, and it's, it's great. It's like triple. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the money can be great. The benefits can be absolutely ridiculous. Um, and okay. it is, I mean, I, I, you know, it's a struggle to make that yeah. choice because you really are giving up a lot, right? Yes. Um, and yes. honestly, it's something I debate with my friends every day, like, when it, when when's the time to pull the trigger when's the time to just say you know what this is my only life i have to lead and when am i going to make the call because if the call yeah. is i just stick in this and i grind this for the next 30 years okay i've made that yeah. call exactly. but there's going to be a huge hole right there's a yeah. huge hole in my heart to do something much different right yeah it's, yeah i mean it, the thing is that um that's that's what what happens you know when you get in the comfort zone and it's just like you go every day to the office you get the the salary every month same day so yeah 
even though you know it's tough it's tough to 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 work there because it's not easy you have to be like really on top of a lot of things but it was that that really kept me there and also you know living in new york and everything but when i had to move back i i took a sabbatical to you know in new york to just to change just first to enjoy the city the way i never did right you know on a monday morning in a park or something like that <laughs> and yeah. then you know also to think about what was the next step and it came one good day that a friend showed me a video and it's called midway it's it's about it's well it's very tough it's made by chris jordan he's a great artist filmmaker and and my friend showed me the video where chicks are being fed by their parents with plastics and uh-huh. Uh, birds, yep. you know, and they they die after very short periods. I mean, they they are born to die because you know right. there's no stomach that can you know hold digest plastic, plastic right? Yeah, mm-hmm. digest plastic. So, you know, when I saw that video, it just I I I kept on crying that night. I I never knew that. The situation was like that, you know. I knew that there right. was pollution because I heard, but I never knew what was really going on exactly in the in, in the oceans and in right. what was happening with marine life, and then what is going on with human race, because you know we're sure. part of that spaceship, you know we are. There's only one as There's of now. One. It's it. If this is it, right? Yeah, and if it doesn't work, then what is going to work? Right. If the ecosystem yep. doesn't work, the oxygen we breathe, and you know, I I I knew that I had that I could do something. Not that I had to do that, but that I, I could. You do could something. do something, which and would be much way, more meaningful to you. Make an impact. Do something impactful. So yes, was it kind of like? Re- was it kind of like you, you in like that moment yeah. you knew you were going to do something? Or did well, it kind of just go for a little while and kind of percolate with you? And well, what I did was that um, what I did was that the next day I started looking for companies that had like good ethics, right? You know, and that that they were doing something to facilitate the solutions yep. to to this exact problem. That is okay plastic in the oceans. So I started looking for, for these people until I found the company that I'm working for still. And that ha- that's how I started. You know, I started, really? I started well, I, I sent, I sent, you know, I, I started sending emails to people. Hey, look, sure. I am the, pe- pe- the person you're looking for, even though they were <laughs> not looking for anyone. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what you got to do. That's exactly what you do. I don't exactly. know. I was completely determined in going and knocking on the door of yeah. the person if they didn't respond to me or anything. And the great thing, my my, what's your price? Free, totally yeah. free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Get, at that time of the of the of my life, I wasn't working for free. But, yeah. But but I I was open open for, for sure. Yeah. Open so so sure. you so that's the that company Bionic Yarn, right? Correct. Yeah. That's so the you. One. Was it literally just an email and they emailed you back and then you started a conversation for, with them? Uh-huh. That's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. How, how quickly did you get hired with them? Well, I sent them an email. It did, the server wasn't working. And a friend, a friend told me, hey, did you receive an email back, confirma- like a confirmation or something? No, no, no. Oh, no, you have to send it again. And she pushed me to send it again. So we did. Yep. And they responded to me two weeks after, and we started the conversation. <laughs> hey. Yeah. That's great. And how, how long ago was that? That was two, 2015. Oh, wow. Okay. Great. Yeah. And so, so you started with this company, Bionic Yarn, who they take, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but they take, as far as my understanding goes, they take plastics, recycle it, and turn it into uh, basically cloth right like some sort of plastic cloth that that then can be manufactured into clothing and shoes and all that sort of stuff is that right more yes, or less fibers different, different fibers, fibers different type of fibers and you know d- depending on what the client needs 
with mm -hmm. they adjust the type of threat that they oh use. wow okay yeah but they have made different things from from backpacks and shoes to clothes yep. to dresses to you know yoga wear um, yeah yeah anything it's so interesting to me like i mean i look at the the environmental movement as very young and i know it, it never feels young right it feels like oh man the world's gonna end tomorrow and i'm like well from my personal feeling is we're just getting started like we're figuring this stuff out it's still brand new i mean i tell my i tell the story of when i was growing up. i grew up in the states we lived on the water so i got i have a passion for the water too and mm -hmm. like we would my, we had a hobie cat which is one of those like two fin boat sailboat thingies and we'd go out there with the cooler And this was back in the time where a beer or a soda had like the pop top where you'd pull off the tab, if you remember those back in the olden days. And my yeah. dad, who I, who I consider one of the first real environmentalists, was like, Adam, look, man, you don't just throw that tab off the side of the boat. No, no. You put it in the can before you sink the can to the bottom of the ocean. You would bear. And I'm like, we've come all the way from that, right? So, and this was only, yeah. you know, this is 30 years ago, right? Yeah. Um, That was yeah. environmentalism in yes. 1978, right? Of course. It, it's, a, it's a different world. And this, you know, we get, I, I know people like to beat up other people and say, oh, it's terrible, it's terrible. I'm like, no, man, we've made incredible, incredible strides in a very, very short period of time, right? Of and course. it's only just beginning. It's only just beginning. I mean, yeah, just the those idea. Are the things, those are the things that you never forget. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And it's, it's so, it's amazing to me because like this idea of making clothes or, or clothing or materials out of recycled plastic. I mean, how old is that industry? It's brand new. Hasn't even brand really new. begun. Yeah, it's brand just starting new. and it's definitely the future. Yes, absolutely. It's so cool, uh -huh. right? So, yeah. so you started working for them, but then you were like, were you feeling like, mm, I still want to do something push even further with that? This is, this is just something I want, my own project. So what, what moved you from that into your current project of the five-minute beach cleanup? What, what was the spark to do that? Yes, well, it, it was really nothing that I thought about. It's, it's something that just happened. I didn't expect this to grow the way it did at all. I wanted to educate people, and, you know, and I was thinking mostly something local mm -hmm. that I could help with because... You know, in the community where I was living in Santa Teresa, I felt like education was playing the biggest part. Absolutely. Yep. And I thought, you know, I thought that, well, I have to say something. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was more towards the Latin American region because I knew that there were some other initiatives similar mm -hmm. in the UK. And there is another in Australia. And they, those were big inspirations for me to create this. The, the five minute beach cleanup it was it was mostly because I knew that there was a, like a hole in in Latin America sure of a movement like this so I started it and I it just started like following the people that you know that were doing similar things and starting posting uh, images of people and you know giving them giving them credit for what they were doing yep so it's, it started like that and I think part of why it's been successful is because of that because Uh, we gave the power to the people, you know? Yeah. Yep. They were the heroes. I started putting pictures of me because I... I, I, I you really, got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> I had, you have to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. The yeah, idea, yeah. yeah, the idea was always that I wanted to show people's efforts yep. and make them feel good for a little yep. bit. Yeah, and, absolutely. And that's, I think that's the, karm, the karmic thing that brought it And now it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger every day, every single yeah. day. Um, well, can you tell so, us just so, huh? just so it, the people, anybody who hasn't read about it, um, tell us what the, you know, the elevator pitch of the five minute uh, beach cleanup is. Tell us what, what the pitch is. Okay. So, well, the, the movement, it's, it's about two basic things. It's first that, um, We need to help the planet. We need to help the human race to survive because we are in a state of emergency and we can all help. We should all help, you know? Mm -hmm. If we do it together, 
we do it. Yep. If we don't, then we will not be able to make it. But yep. I feel that there's hope and that we really, really need to put all of our hands into this problem and solve this problem. And it starts at home. Mm -hmm. It starts in the supermarket. It starts in the shopping mall. It starts in every single action that you take. Everything is related. And I believe that every action that you take matters. Sure. If you take the bike or if you take the car. Sure. You know? So you begin buy, the, beginning to make those choices, the, the choices yeah. that... As a uh -huh. society, as we're making these choices, we begin making smarter and smarter choices. And then in 100 years, we're in a totally different place than we are today, yes. right? Obviously, yes. yeah. Yes. Yep. yes. And, the, and, and as a consumer, we need to really think about our habits. I mean, yep. it's incredible. But, you know, I'm really hopeful because there are a lot of movements growing on. Mm -hmm. There's the zero waste movement that's getting yep. bigger and bigger. <laughs> that's a tough one. You know, I've, seen, know, I've seen people do it. It's amazing. And so it's hard. <laughs> yeah. You, it's a huge lifestyle uh, commitment, right? But huge. it's so beautiful. I think we yep. are going back to basics. Yep. We are all trying to go back to basics. I've seen people that they're doing their own toothpaste. <laughs> Instead of buying the toothpaste, the tube. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They really don't know where to deposit yet. <laughs> Honestly. And I think that that's my next step. We're going to build our own toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to buy anymore, you know, and start doing it. That's why. So the pitch, it's basically what's your habits, help, right. help yourself and help the oceans and marine at life. the same time, it's right. like at the same, wherever you are, you can, yep. you don't have to go to do the beach cleanup. The beach cleanup is the biggest thing about the beach cleanup. It then makes you wonder what you're going to do after, you mm -hmm. know, because you don't want to keep on uh, picking up garbage. <laughs> and rubbish all over that. <laughs> Sure. Right. So actually, the beach cleanup is just the, the to get that person thinking about, well, how am I doing in the rest of my life? Right. Yeah. I mean, yes, it helps yeah. clean the beaches. You, you can recycle that plastic, recycle all the stuff. Um, but it gets them thinking about how should I act in my day to day life? Yeah. That's the that's kind of the goal. Yeah. The goal is to to make people touch to touch their hearts. Yep. And and so it for for. Yeah, and start making a change and telling people about it and everything. Yeah, I think that's the main goal. That sounds great. What have you done? What's been the, the ways you've, you've, when you first started it, did you just start it with your Instagram or how did you start and how did you kind of, did you even think about how you were going to promote it or you were just like started taking pictures and doing little posts? What'd you, did you have any yeah, sort no, of plan? It was, it, it's been always like that. It started with the Instagram, then start, then we moved to Facebook, and then we ha we did our Facebook page, uh, our website. Sorry. Yep. Yep. And uh, and now we are building a structure. I am here with Mauricio. Mauricio is my boyfriend, and he's my partner in in business too. So. <laughs> I oh, we I, I lost the video feed. Oh no, <laughs> we lost the video. Hey, hey, Mauricio, how you doing? We're back. Yeah. It, it like cut yeah, out. You good. moved it. I, I don't know what you did. It, it, the Wi-Fi got. <laughs> yeah, but now Pu I think that's it's pura vida. Good. Yeah, good. Um. So, yeah. Well, it started like that with an Instagram account, and then with Facebook, and then with the website, and and I didn't have any strategy. I was just like posting pictures until this person came, Gary, our friend Gary. Mm -hmm. came and did the video that you used to promote this. Yeah, it's a great video. Did, yeah. He did that video and then some other people found out through him mm -hmm. about it. And then, you know, like it, they asked me to do videos, you know, to ask for permission, permission to do the videos. And some, some people I sent footage to some other, they took it yep. from different social medias. And, and, you know, like, so it started getting like that and started getting known as yeah. the first, you know, because of the movement and also because of the lifestyle that I was having there. I right. think that, that was what really convinced people that you don't need very much to live, to live had a happy life, you know? Oh, definitely not. When you're on a beautiful beach like that, oh my God, it's the best. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what people say. I, I've seen the comments and people say, oh, who else is going to do something in that beach? 
<laughs> right? Exactly. I mean, I've lived, I, you know, for a period in my life, I, I, I was off for three years. We sold a business and I was all, I was basically retired for three years and surfing twice a day. Uh, it's amazing. I, I recommend, highly recommend anybody try it, anybody do it. If given the, you know, if you have, you're lucky enough to have that opportunity. Uh, but eventually, I don't know how long you've done it for, but eventually you will run into esoteric questions of what am I doing with my life? Is this all I'm doing with my life? You know, I, I, I'm a firm believer, at least for myself, that I have to be building something, doing something uh, a little bit bigger than just hanging out and surfing all day. You can do that for a while, but it can't be your whole life, right? It can't. Yeah, I don't think have. I've ever, yeah, no, I don't think I've ever spent a month without yeah. working. I've, I'm always working on something. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. I think it keeps the mind healthy and, oh and my God. and sharp. Yep. So. No, no, the people, the people who think that, oh, it'd be great, wouldn't it, my life would be awesome then, have no idea. They've never done it. And so there's, an, a, mad, there's a dream out there that, oh, like the Jimmy Buffett lifestyle where you can go and have margaritas and go surfing or go to the beach every day. Let me tell you, I've, I've warned people like no. that. It's nice, but you got to try it out. Like if you think you're going to do that for the next 15 years, you got another thing coming. Because there's no way you're gonna you're you're gonna run up against a brick wall of yeah. life hitting you in the face that's gonna go no no this is not yeah. what you're meant to do. <laughs> no, I think re I think retirement, like you say, it's not it's not good. Not a good I mean, idea. No, it's not yeah. a good idea. No, there's always something to do, also to work on, even if it's at home or something. But I don't think I will ever retire. No, no. Especially if I'm doing what I love doing, that it's what I'm doing now. Exactly. I don't feel like I have time to retire. <laughs> Too busy. Just, I would like to get the money to check every day. Every <laughs> month. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but not exactly just to retire. No, I know. No, that's the worst I'm, thing. Yep, no. for sure. I'm, I always I'm with say you. that. Yeah, I'm I, with you 100%. I, I, I think those expats that just move to another country and let's drink margaritas and all that. No, no. Nope. Nope. I've That's seen it. It, turn, it turns ugly so quickly. I mean, just people fall right into the alcoholism and, I mean, misery. You just see misery. And uh, it's just never a good idea. I tell people, I work with a guy. He's like, oh, it's going to be great. I can't wait to retire. I'm like, man, stop it. You need to get something to do quick. Because either you're going to go crazy or your wife's going to kill you. One or the other. You, know, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's dangerous. And the best, well, the best thing is to have a passion, something you're passionate about, and you can throw your your kind of weight behind and your mind behind. Um, and I think passion for me isn't just about liking what you do, but it, it gives you the power to to kind of push through those walls when those walls come up. Um, and I'm sure you're doing this, creating a a, a, a web page and doing all these things. It takes effort, you know. Putting out Instagram posts take, takes effort. There's nothing this is not easy to do, right? Building a following on Instagram, none of this is easy, right? It's not no, easy no, to I do. No, no, I dedicate my life to this. A absolutely, absolutely. It's, 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 I, I, I read the news about what's going on every day. And well, we're, we're building different platforms right now. We have another idea that we're going to soon announce. What okay, is. cool. And we're making partnerships and... And we, and we want to put in practice a lot of things, the pilot projects that we want to put in practice here in Costa Rica to be able to, to replicate in the world. Mm -hmm. And we are taking a lot of projects. So we, we now not to, we need to narrow down the, yeah. the projects because we... Mauricio it gets a little passionate. overwhelming, right? It's a little overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we are very passionate about it. And we just like want to do more and more and more. And... And I think that we need to like, you know, <laughs> sometimes be like, no, no, wait, let's do this first and then let's do this other because otherwise you go crazy. But go yeah, crazy. more than, we're trying to get this bigger more than social media. Right. We're definitely doing it bigger and we want to create more impact. Right. With this. Do you think the impact is going to mainly come through this, what you're talking about, education, educating people? Or is it just the kind of, getting people to do something and that then carries over to their regular life. Like what would be your ideal in the ideal mm -hmm. world? You have a magic wand to wave. 
what would be your ideal impact you would make? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the, the, the first things that, that we need to do is not only, okay, in, in regards to education, there are two points. First, that we need to educate people about what's going on and about the threats that we're facing, the importance of this matter, of this issue. Right. It's really, really important. People need to be aware of that. So we need to remove the veil and right. let people know, even if it's sad, even if it's, you know, first. And then second, we need to, to show them the solutions and educate people yep. on what's going on. Because a lot of people doesn't know the efforts that Costa Rica is taking. And right. we will soon announce things too in regards to this. Because yep. there, there are a lot of people thinking about solutions. And, but people don't know it. Yeah, they yeah. really don't know. So we want to help people to know this, what's going on. Where can they deposit that kind of garbage that no one picks up, but now it's going to get picked up? Right. So, uh, so this education part goes in those two things, you know. And I believe that as, as long as we moved into another country and we started, with, let's say we, we, we want to help Panama with something, let's say. And so right. then we need to let people know about what's going on in Panama, what's the problem really in Panama, and then what solutions Panama offers, right. you know, to, to do that with the garbage. So we want to start connecting the dots. Right. So you keep know? it. So you're talking about keep it more on a local level, meaning countrywide or whatever. What are the what's the problems within our within our own country and how can yeah. we make an impact within our own country rather than make it a the world is ending. We need to do something. It's no. This is our world. What can yeah. we do in our communities, basically, yes. to make yes. this better? Yes, yeah. exactly. We want to yeah. connect the dots. Yeah, through I think that's. I think that's the way to do it. Yeah. Because I would add one word to what you said. It's not only education that we want to focus, but communication. Yeah. And connect the dots. Let's say someone in Italy, it's in 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 Rome, and they are you know doing beach cleanups and they mm -hmm. want to recycle that beach cleanup trash, but they don't really know where to go, what to do, right. how to organize a beach cleanup, right. how to deposit that garbage into the recycler and what the recycler is gonna do with that. So right. we wanna start informing people, communication, you know, let, opening the, the, connecting the dots. So they started the, the cleanup, they know where to deposit the trash and they know what to do with the trash. So we nice. wanna do that. That's the mission, our mission. Well, that is, a, that's, I, I applaud you. I think it's, it's a worthwhile effort. And, uh, you know, I, for me, this is going to take time, right? But it's all going it, to, it's only going to, the change is only going to happen if we as individuals do something, right? And I, I applaud you for your effort. It's going to be, uh, can't wait to see what happens, right? It's going to be great. Yeah, yeah it's going to be great. I think uh, I, I've seen, I've seen the reaction of people with the, with the Family Beach Cleanup uh, movement. Yep. I've seen people write me all the time. I am so, it, it makes me so proud and so happy. I, I'm still yep. proud of human race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, some, people, yes. some people really tell me, how can I help you? What can I do? And those are the people that are going to start building this movement that is going to bring the change. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah, we're, we're starting to make these leaders and, yep. and build. build I was going to, I would say, I would say, yeah, I would say with that, like when I was growing up, um, and in the States, they had this thing, uh, Smokey the Bear, right? And Smokey the Bear was give a hoot or whatever. I don't know that. Give, don't, give a hoot, don't pollute or whatever it was. It wasn't Smokey the Bear. It was that. The, yeah. The whatever. But whatever these things, they got it into the mind of like kids, basically. Hey, stop throwing litter at the side of the road, you know? And just this little thing, right? But all yeah. the kids suddenly, no, daddy, you don't throw that out the car window anymore, Right. And you've seen it. I mean, you've, if you've lived in Costa Rica at all, you've seen it. Like when I came here 20 years ago, forget it. Any road you went on, there was just trash along each side of the road. Now, it doesn't happen. If you, I mean, once in a while, you'll see some guy throw stuff out of the window. And I guarantee you, everybody who sees him is going, look at that guy, man. Look at that guy. Yeah. Right? So oh, it's changed. Yeah, it, yeah it's totally yeah, changed. It happens in Costa Rica. It yep. happens in Costa Rica still. Incredible. It still happens, it but but it's unusual now. It's unusual. It wasn't unusual twenty years ago. Right? Oh yeah, now 
we are about to get, start a campaign with the UN in Costa Rica, and I hope that it's go, it goes global. And it's about that, what you're mm -hmm. saying. It's about how kids have the power to teach their parents. So we're, we're, we're doing Absolutely. The, the, yep. Yeah, we're, we're, we're figuring out, figuring out the, the plot for these uh, educative yep. videos, educational videos. But they're going to go through that like yeah. that. Through like the, the, how kids let their parents know what to do, what's better for the world and for their lives. It's going to go there. Because that's I the way it happens. Love now. it. Have you, got your, have you got your Snapchat? Have you got your Snapchat channel up yet? Because that's how you get to the kids. Do you have your Snapchat ready? I do. I do. I have it, but I never used it. I have so many other things that. Ah, uh, well, now's the time. <laughs> but we'll ask, we'll ask some, 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 some girls to help us, my niece and my daughter, <laughs> so they can start sending the messages to their friends or something. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I think, you know, you reach them while they're young, you change, person, you change somebody for a lifetime, right? And uh, they can absolutely, they absolutely uh, influence their parents and the way we be all behave. I, I think that's a great strategy. That sounds, uh, just sounds amazing, man. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope, I hope it gets a lot of views and that people really start applying. We absolutely. Need to go viral. We need to go viral. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to send them to you. So you, you put them on your podcast experience or something. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. Your wall. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'd love to, as I told you before, I'd love to help you. Uh, I, I do build um, chat bots and stuff on Facebook. I'm happy, love to help you out with that. Um, you know, either to drive, I, I, it's, I don't know what, you know, it's kind of like you, it's tough because you have to have your vision of what you want to do, how you want to create these relationships with people, right? Uh, it's a challenge and a big challenge. It's hard to do. Um, I, would, I, I would love to do it. Yeah, we need to get together and uh, figure this out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to really. I'm a it's really a tech person, although it's, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really like. Um, hey, we got this figured out. I mean, this only took 20 minutes. Think that's good, man. We're moving up. You see, <laughs> I, I, what I was going to say is that I'm not really, really good at it, but I like it. You like it. That's right. That, hey, that's number one. You got to like it, and then you can keep trying and keep going and keep going. Um, But we'll talk more offline. I'd love to help you. Uh, it's just such a worthwhile event, a uh, worthwhile project. Um, you know, I think it's great. I see what you have already done. Uh, very impressive already on Instagram and the number of people already involved and pictures from all over the world. You know, it's just, you know, uh, people get yeah. excited about something. And it's just when, when they realize, look, I'm making this very small change, which is at the beat. I, I, I pick up stuff. It's a very small change but it's impact. And then I love how, how you're like, it's an impact, but then they think about it and they carry it over into their life and they make the small change in their life. And all of a sudden it grows, right? That's just the way it grows. And, uh, you know, it literally begins with one and then another and another, and another, and then all of a sudden you have a movement of people. And by the time that happens, all it takes is a matchstick of the right person, the right celebrity, the right, whatever. And then, poof, right. That's but you're doing, you're laying the, the, what we would call a fire you're laying the kindling right now right yeah. and that's just hard work and effort so yeah. i applaud you for that that's awesome thank you thank you Th well thank you so much for joining me and we'll talk offline more and stuff and uh, thank Excellent. you so much Adam, it was a great night thank you so much for calling and for for inviting me to this podcast it's it's my really pleasure my right. pleasure have a great have evening a great night. thank you thanks for everybody for joining thank you